I don't want people to think that I think I'm this great drummer because, to me, I'm just a kid playing drums, and I love music. It's so refreshing to just play straight ahead music with lots of twists. I'm very outgoing, an extrovert, a control freak. I've always had lots of side projects in my life, but what's exciting for me is knowing that Adrenaline Mob is bigger than that. I find myself a much happier person when I turn off my computer and live my life. One of the biggest misconceptions was, after I left Dream Theater, I went off and did, like, five different bands and side projects. Everyone was like, we thought you wanted a break. And it was like, well, I didn't want a break from making music, I just needed a break from the Dream Theater camp. Anytime I say anything about Dream Theater, honestly, I'd rather not talk about it, because no matter what I say, it will be twisted and, so I kind of have made myself promise that I won't talk about Dream Theater anymore. Life is too short for resentments, and I always forgive. It's nice when somebody says that you're their favorite drummer. I really do care what people think and I revolved my whole career and all the 25 years with Dream Theater. I ran that band and made decisions based on caring what the fans thought and wanted. I understand that Adrenaline Mob is not going to be every Dream Theater fan's cup of tea. I totally get that, I understand that. It's different world. I'm a very sentimental guy, I'm a very nostalgic guy. After I wrote, The Best of Times for My Dad and after I completed the 12 Step Suite with Dream Theater, I very much felt like I had said everything I wanted to say lyrically. I am looking forward to working with the great staff of Loud and Proud Records, some of whom I worked very closely with during their time at Roadrunner and my time with Dream Theater. I look forward to continuing that relationship with the winery dogs. Richie Kotzen is such an unbelievable talent as a vocalist, guitarist, and songwriter. My lesson would be to not sell yourself to anybody else and stay true to yourself. People always say to me, well, how can a marriage last when you're away as much as you are? And I always say, well, absence makes the heart grow fonder. That time apart from each other has actually strengthened our relationship. I see the headlines on Blabbermouth, and the fans are saying, why is he always talking about Dream Theater? I'm not talking about Dream Theater. I get asked about it. I'd rather be entertained and go to a show and watch a drummer and have somebody that makes me actually smile. So I don't judge drummers based on their technical ability, I judge them based on the overall package and what they bring to the music they're part of. As far as I know, you only live once. So, I want to make the most of it while I can and work with as many different people as I can. I need to be creative all the time. I don't think there's such a thing as a best drummer. To me. There's way more to being a good drummer than precision and technique. One of the reasons I needed to leave Dream Theater was because I didn't want to end my career as just the drummer in one band. I just like to be remembered as a huge music lover. I have so much gratitude that I get to do this for a living and that I actually have fans who come to the shows and buy the records and support me online. When you're putting together a concept album, it's all about the flow and the story. There's been a lot of crossing paths with the Yes camp over the years for me. The first one was when Dream Theater and Yes toured together in 2004, which was a lot of fun. My love for Yes is pretty well documented. I kind of always made it a tradition, whenever Dream Theater played Toronto, to play a Rush cover. I spent my life's work doing what I did in Dream Theater for 25 years, so I'm proud of that. Billy Sheehan has always been my number one favorite bass player of all time. I'm a workaholic. I surround myself with incredible musicians who inspire me to always do my best. You don't have to be a great drummer to be the most important guy in the band. I guess I did make my name out of my drumming, and I have the big drum sets, and I'm doing all these crazy, odd time signatures, so, yeah, I guess drumming was very important to what made me popular. I've been asked to write a book several times, I've had several publishers come to me and offer me book deals. Especially right after I left Dream Theater and Avenged Sevenfold, there was a lot of drama going on in my life, so the book companies came at me thirsty for blood and gossip, and I turned down all the deals. I don't like when I see bands that are just a memory of what they used to be, and there's a few out there that I've seen recently that are still touring. I'm not gonna name them, but some of the members can barely play their parts and then they have a lot of other members that weren't even originally in the band. 
I was always very extroverted and loud. When you're making this kind of music, you don't need a producer. If you're making pop albums or trying to write hit singles, then yeah. But if you're writing 20-minute prog epics, as long as you know how to make it sound good, and you have a good mixer, that's all you need. There's the drums, the music, the melodies, the lyrics, the production, the artwork. There are so many elements to making an album, and the drumming is just a very small fraction of what I focus on. You can put me in front of any kit, and it is a fun thing to have to adapt. It inspires me to try different things. I like that. When I first came out with the winery dogs, I had a Bonham setup. That was such a departure from the huge kits that I had become known for. It was really enjoyable. With the Neil Morse band, we're doing progressive music with a harder edge, it's a little more in dream theater territory for me. Flying Colors is a little more poppy, it's more Radiohead, Muse, and Coldplay territory, so I approached that drumming in a different way. Some of my heroes are John Bonham, Keith Moon, Neil Peart, Ringo Starr, Terry Bozio, Bill Bruford. The list goes on and on and on. When I sit down to do an interview, I try to be polite and answer the questions that I'm asked. I love when people know me from things other than Dream Theater. After I left Dream Theater, and I was doing Avenged Sevenfold, Twisted Sister, all these other things, I made a lot of new fans in a lot of new areas. I can't possibly overstate how much influence Rush had on me as a young teenager. I would say from about 1981 to 1987, they were my gods. I've known Russell Allen for over a decade now, and I've always thought he was a very underrated singer. He has one of the best voices in the business I've ever heard. Visit our website for more quotes. Quoting.com